In the following presentation, we will discuss the analysis of a frame structure subject to snow load. Snow can exert substantial load on building roofs, which can produce additional internal forces in the skeleton of the structure. Most design standards offer provisions for calculating the roof's snow load, as well as identifying the critical load patterns that must be considered when designing a structure. In this lecture, we will learn how the roof's snow load is calculated and what load patterns need to be examined for the purposes of designing the skeleton of a specific house. Subsequently, we are going to analyze an interior frame belonging to the skeleton of the house under the snow load and determine the critical bending moments that develop in the beams and columns. For structural analysis, we will use the matrix displacement method. Here, we will only present the results of the analysis since we have discussed the details of this method in previous lectures. You can learn about the specifics of the displacement method by reviewing lectures SA45 through SA50. Consider a house located in the northeast region of the United States, where snow could deposit a significant amount of load on the roof of the structure. As you can see, the skeleton of the house consists of four parallel frames. Let us analyze one of the interior frames affected by the snow load. Here are the key dimensions of the structure. The roof snow load would be transferred to the supporting frames via a flat rectangular concrete slab. Consequently, each interior frame is responsible for carrying the load over a rectangular area with dimensions 54 feet by 24 feet. If the weight per square foot of snow is denoted as PF, the resulting uniformly distributed load on the frame can be written as 24 PF. We consider the frame to be fixed at its base. Here is a two-dimensional view of the frame and the uniformly distributed snow load. To determine PF, we are going to use a design standard published by the American Society of Civil Engineers referred to as ASCE 716. Here, roof snow load is expressed in terms of ground snow load using the following equation. The equation is a product of four factors. CE refers to the exposure factor. It is a measure of the nature of the terrain, location and the exposure of the structure. For a detached single-family house located in a suburban area used in this example, the exposure factor is 1. CT indicates the thermal factor. It is a function of the ambient temperature of the building. Snow tends to melt and accumulate less on the roof of a heated house than on a building that has a lower ambient temperature. For a residential building, a thermal factor of 1.0 can be used. IS is the importance factor. It is a measure of the risk to human life in the event of structural failure. For a typical residential house, the importance factor is 1. PG refers to the ground snow load. Its value can be determined using a map given in the standard. Since the house in our example is located in a suburban area near New York City, a PG of 30 pounds per square foot should be used. By plugging these numbers into this equation, we calculate the roof snow load to be 21 pounds per square foot. For flat or low sloped roofs, we need to ensure that the design snow load exceeds the minimum required load. ASCE 716 provides the following equation for calculating the minimum snow load. In this case, PG is greater than 20. Hence, the minimum snow load is 20 pounds per square foot. Since the calculated PF is greater than the minimum load, we will use 21 pounds per square foot for the roof snow load. Therefore, the magnitude of the uniformly distributed load on the frame becomes... We need to analyse the frame under this particular loading case, which assumes that snow has covered the entire tributary roof area for the frame. 
We refer to this as load case 0. In addition, we must consider the scenarios in which snow could partially cover the roof. To understand why partial loading needs to be anticipated, imagine a roof beam with an overhang on either side. Suppose the roof is covered with snow, exerting a uniformly distributed load of 100 pounds per foot on the beam. If we draw the beam's moment diagram, we find that the maximum bending moment is at the midpoint of the span. The magnitude of the moment is 3,250 pound-feet. Consider what would occur if the snow is removed from the two overhang areas, but the rest of the roof is left untouched. This would cause the maximum moment in the beam to increase from 3,250 to 4,050 pounds-feet. This example illustrates how the internal member forces can increase when part of the snow is removed from the roof. Per ASCE 716, for the house under consideration, three partial loading cases should be considered. In addition to the full loading case, we need to examine the following three cases. Case 1. Full snow load is present on an exterior span, while all other spans carry half the snow load. If we take beam 910 as the exterior span, this loading scenario results. If we choose beam 1112 as the exterior span, we get this loading scenario. Since the frame is symmetrical about this vertical center line, we only need to analyze the frame under one of the two loading scenarios. For example, under this loading scenario, the analysis of the frame reveals that the maximum positive moment in this member is 5 kip feet. The moment in this member has a maximum negative value of 0 0.8 kip feet. See what happens if the distributed load is flipped, like this. Since the frame is symmetrical, and we are assuming that all the members have the same material and section properties, we can flip these moment magnitudes around the axis of symmetry like this. Therefore, by taking advantage of the symmetrical nature of the system, we can determine the results of the frame analysis under one of the two loading scenarios without analyzing the structure twice. For loading case 1, let us analyze the frame using this loading scenario. Case 2. Half snow load is placed on an exterior span while all other spans carry the full snow load. This case is similar to case 1 in that we can anticipate two loading scenarios, yet we only need to perform the necessary computations for one of them. Case 3. Any two adjacent spans are subjected to the full snow load, while the remaining spans carry only half the load. For our frame, this loading case turns out to be identical to case 2. Therefore, we can omit it from further consideration. ASCE 716 offers provisions for additional loading cases for sloped roofs. However, since the roof of the house in our example is flat, these cases are not applicable here. Therefore, the frame must be analysed under three distinct loading cases. For frame analysis, we can use the matrix displacement method. The details of the method were presented in previous lectures, so it will not be reiterated. To facilitate the calculations, I have used an application program called iFrame to analyze the frame for each loading case. You can learn more about the program by watching video IT02. Here are the results of the analysis. For loading case 0, the moment diagram for each beam and column is shown here. For better visualization, I used blue for the column diagrams and red for the beam diagrams. Except for the three beams along the top of the frame where the distributed load resides, the moment diagram has a linear shape in each member. The moment diagram for each of the beams along the top of the frame has a quadratic shape with negative values at the ends of the member and a maximum positive value somewhere near the mid-span. The moment diagrams for the other two loading cases follow the same overall pattern. 
However, the moment values vary for each member from one case to another. For example, bear in mind the maximum positive and negative moments for this member, which are positive 8.9 and negative 16 respectively. Here is the moment diagram for the same member, but under loading case 1. Note that the maximum moment in the member has gone up to 9.4 while the negative moment is reduced to negative 14.1. Under loading case 2, the positive moment has dropped down to 8.8, .8, while the negative moment has reached its most critical value, negative 16.5. As you can see, the moment values in a typical member fluctuate as the snow pattern on the roof changes. A comparison of the three diagrams reveals the following maximum positive and negative moments for the left half of the frame. Since the frame is symmetrical, we can use the same set of values for the right half of the frame. Here is the axis of symmetry for the frame. This beam is the mirror image of this beam in relation to the axis of symmetry. Therefore, the two members share the same maximum positive and negative moments. Also, this beam is a mirror image of this one. Therefore, the two members have the same critical moment values. Similarly, the two interior columns are mirror images of each other. As a result, they share the same moment values. The same holds true for the two exterior columns in which the corresponding members have identical moment values. This concludes our discussion on the treatment of snow load per ASCE 716. Needless to say, if we were to actually design this building, we would consider other load types and load combinations to ensure the safety of the system under dead load, live load, wind load, and other relevant loads that would govern the design of the house.